Welcome to the One of 20 podcast. I'm here with my friend, Sydney Reynolds, and we're here today to talk all about mental health. I think it's so important that we're talking about mental health because we're in the middle of a global pandemic. We're in a health crisis. And I think that there's a lot of physical illness going around. And I think mental illness has kind of been pushed on the back burner. So welcome, Sydney. Hi, Jonathan. I'm really excited to be here today. I'm excited to have you. So the reason I asked you to be on the podcast is because I know you're a big advocate for mental health and kind of destigmatizing it and having more of an open conversation. Can you tell me um, why you do it? What, why is it so important to you and just like your passion behind it? Yeah, so a lot of mental illnesses run in my family. My grandfather has bipolar disorder type one. uh, And me and my siblings all have some sort of mental disorder. So um, I have anxiety and I'm medicated for that. My other sister has depression, medicated for that. And my other sister has OCD and anorexia. So obviously we're just, you know, a whole group of girls who uh, went or have gone through different experiences in mental health and Going through my own journey, uh, you know, I I think that it's really important to talk about it because, you know, like I talked to, I have two little sisters, like I said, and my one sister was like, I don't really want to talk about having depression because I'm afraid people will make fun of me. And she does still get like made fun of because her side effect of depression is hair pulling for some reason. That's like a tick that she has. And she gets made fun of for playing with her hair. So I want to just like bring awareness to all the symptoms that comes along with mental illnesses or just talking about mental health because a lot of people are afraid and feel super alone. So it's always great to have a community behind you talking about it. Definitely. Thank, first of all, thank you for sharing. Um, I think it's really important that you're bringing awareness to your mental um, health and the others around you who you love. And I know for me, like I never had anxiety, but when the pandemic started, I feel like my anxiety is through the roof because it's just like the little things because before the pandemic, like from 2019 prior, I was like a social butterfly, but now going out in public or even going to class, like brings me so much anxiety, excuse me. Um, So I definitely think that's such a big thing. And do you think, did you have anxiety before the pandemic began? Oh yeah, I I definitely did. But only during, you know, the pandemic, I think a lot of people are allowing themselves to like uh, sit down and reflect on what they were like before the pandemic and how the pandemic changed their lives. I know so many people have recognized their sexuality, have discovered parts of their gender, you know, like that it's definitely more flexible than they thought it would be. And I think mental health is something that a lot of people are exploring. Uh, So I only got medicated because I finally had time to sit down with a psychiatrist and I was able to go on Lexapro. So that was awesome. And I think it was really only because of quarantine that I was able to like sit down with my mom and I was like, Hey, like, I think it would be great to explore something and see how it works for me. So even though the pandemic has made a lot of people's lives negative, like you said, you feel more anxious. I think it's allowed people to really discover parts about themselves. And I don't, I hate saying come to terms with, cause that makes it sound very negative, but people are coming to terms with, Hey, I have been struggling for a while. So I think it's time to like spend time on myself. No, definitely. And I know for me, I didn't really have a aha moment during quarantine, but I've noticed little things about myself and like those around me. And as you said, like people are discovering more parts of their identity than they did before, whether it's their sexuality, their gender identity, their mental health. I think that the world kind of had this reset from like March to May where people took a time just to take a deep breath and they got to exhale and they were able to say, wow, like this is who I am, or this is something I want to work on, or this is something that I want to recognize and improve. And I just think overall, like, despite all the downfalls and the tragedy behind the pandemic, I think that people are starting to really get to know themselves in a deeper way than they did before because before you were go 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 you were like Mm -hmm. on this regimented structured time crazy schedule but now working from home you could take 30 minutes to yourself you don't have somebody watching over you telling you to get back to work and I think that's so 
I think it's great, honestly. And I was just on LinkedIn before this and I saw this post and it said, um, comment which scenario you want to be in. Like, do you want to work at home remote five days a week after the pandemic? Four, three, two, one. And I think it's so interesting and probably better for people's mental health that they're being given this option where they'll be able to work from home more often than they did before. Um, I definitely think that's great. And even with social media, I think a lot of people are coming out, speaking of LinkedIn social media, I think a lot of people are coming out about their journeys and their stories. And I don't think it's just regular people. I think a lot of celebrities are coming out with like their stories and their identities. I don't know what your take is on it. Yeah, I definitely think that uh, our whole world has kind of changed when we got sent home. I think that working from home has opened up this whole door of allowing, uh, always relating it back to mental health. So a lot of students hated going in person to school because they had social anxiety. Um, They felt, you know, I think anxiety relates to a lot of it. Some students are like really thriving online. So um, I think that hopefully, you know, after we have the vaccine, we have herd immunity, maybe schools will be like, hey, it's, we can have an option for students to be online because, you know, they fell through the cracks when we were in person and now they're thriving and people can continue to thrive after the pandemic. And I think that's also the same thing for workplaces too. Like, I know my dad is definitely a lot happier now that he doesn't have to commute to Pennsylvania every day. It's like an hour commute. And now he can just stay home, hang out with our dog, like make some lunch and, you know, like discuss, like, be able to live a healthier life. And I think that's the same for a lot of people is taking away that commute and being able to spend time with yourself and not feel pressured in the workplace. So uh, even though a lot of people's mental health has changed, they feel locked up in some places and um, feel more anxious now that obviously there's a whole pandemic going on. uh, There have been some like, I guess, strides made in, hey, like, people don't feel pressured anymore in the workplace. They actually feel more at home. Like they feel better working from home. So I hope that that's a permanent change is, you know, making changes to the workday and making sure the workers are always healthy and happy to go to work. Definitely. And I like how you said that your dad feels healthier staying home, working from home and hanging out with your dog. What did you find during like the pandemic? And even when you're struggling with your mental health, what like things bring you joy? What, what do you do for self-care that kind of eases your anxiety besides medication that just kind of brings you joy in a little pocket of peace? Well, my dog, my dog's always like the number one. Um, and I, I mentioned my dad, like we're, we went on this is before I went back to college. We went on family walks almost every single day. We got to sit outside in the fire, like by the fireplace and just like, have a drink, which uh, not me, but you know what I mean? Like my parents have a drink and like, we just got to talk before dinner and having that time to just like sit down as a whole family. That wasn't always possible for a lot of people. They had homework or extracurriculars, but now like you can just hang out with your friends and take the time to talk with people and communicate with people. So that's definitely something that brought me a lot of happiness, especially when the pandemic just happened and it was a new thing that we were transitioning into. Definitely. Um, I know for me, the same thing. We didn't do family walks just because my, so my parents are divorced. So they were in different houses. I was staying with my mom. My mom's a healthcare worker. So Mm -hmm. she was working in the front lines. And then my brother, the boy sleeps like 18 hours a day. So for me, I was kind of in a different position where I kind of just like had to keep myself entertained a lot of the times. And you think like, oh, you're going to have all this alone time. Like you can just do whatever. Like you're not really like, I didn't really have to tell, like I didn't leave the house but it was still like, besides school, I just kind of felt like I existed. And one thing I did was I watched a lot of reality television. During <laughs> yeah. Because I like felt a sort of escapism. I was like, oh, like, for example, Jersey Shore, I binge watched the show in like two weeks. And I was like, it stimulated some sort of life that I was supposed to be living in college, not all of the elements that they did, but like some of them. And I found that really helped me. And like, if I didn't have TV, I don't know how I would have gotten through quarantine, but I think the little things are what brought me joy being able to 
not have to rush through breakfast or being able to have a home cooked meal every night and even being able to splurge and have takeout every once in a while. I think those are the little things that we all take for granted when we're in this busy, fast paced life. And I think it's the little things like for you, you said your family walks, the fireplace, like things like that. And I know like once the world gets back to normal, I hope they remember to take a deep breath too and just enjoy the little things because those are the things that bring us joy ultimately. And it's definitely made, I saw a tweet the other day that, you know, it's made the workplace a lot more accessible for people with disabilities. So like people with chronic illnesses sometimes can't go into work because they are dealing with their disease or their illness and being able to go online, like gives them that option to still work from home if they're like able to. Uh, Same with, I think that TikTok's made like bounds and strides as well. Uh, Almost every video I see now is captioned. So we're like making progress there and the pandemic has allowed us to like take that time and make the world more accessible and I think that that's so important as well definitely I know for me I have chronic illness so and I've been struggling a lot with my colitis lately and honestly like I kind of hope they keep the work from home thing because if I could work from home doing something I love but being in the comfort of my own home, dealing with my colitis privately or dealing with my hypoglycemia or my asthma privately, I think it would be so much better because I would still be able to hop on Zoom and talk to my coworkers, talk to my boss, but I would still be able to have that privacy that I necessarily wouldn't have in the workplace. And going off of that, yeah, like TikTok, they have closed captions now. And I think there's so many different apps that do it. Some people write like their captions. I don't know what you do. I um I just got this app that like puts them right above your head. But yeah, I um, that app. <laughs> and it even I read somewhere that even the algorithm picks up the closed captions that like they'll read what you write and then they'll target it towards an audience that you're talking to rather than being lost in the for you page. Yeah, I think that the the pandemic has, I think that a lot of places were scared, bosses and like CEOs were scared to allow people to work from home because they're just afraid that Oh, people will slack. They'll take longer lunch breaks, you know, everything like that. And the pandemic has proven that work can still happen from home. You can still be just as productive and taking a longer lunch break is actually better for a lot of workers because they can, like we said, have more time to reflect, have a happier day, and they don't feel as stressed working from home. So I think that the pandemic has proven people can work just as fine, even when they're not in person. And I hope that it stays that way. And bosses and CEOs and just companies will allow it to become a new normal. Definitely. I think that we're headed towards this direction of a new normal that we've never seen before. I know my sister works at NBC New York City. Her and her fiance both work there. They're both producers of some sort. Alexandra, if you're listening, I don't remember your title. I digress. But um, yeah, they're working from home and now they have the option to stay home or go back into the office. So my sister's like, I can work my four to midnight shift on my show, do it from home and go to bed being over five rather than leaving my uh my apartment in like 45 minutes north of New York City, going in, getting there at four, leaving at midnight, not getting home till one, two o'clock in the morning. And she's like, it's saving me so much money. She's saving like the Metro North ticket. She doesn't have to pay for that. All she has to pay for is to like live in her apartment. And I just think that although it's not ideal, I think companies are saving a lot of money because they don't have to rent out spaces necessarily. And two, I think employees are saving a lot of money in commuting. Like your dad said, he probably saves so much money in gas. Yeah, no, he definitely does. And also she's saving a lot of time to herself because you said that she can just like go to sleep right after she's tired versus that one hour commute. Like she has that whole extra hour to herself and like a whole extra hour of sleep really does like wonders for your brain and makes you feel so much more well rested for the next day. So there's also that, like that probably helped her as well and making, feeling more refreshed every day. Absolutely. And I know she's so much happier working from home. I know she misses the office terribly, but like she's happier. 
Um, and my brother, even when during the pandemic, he works for Apple. So he was working from home doing like modules and stuff. And obviously you're not in store, you're not having the same experience, but he seemed happier too. Granted, he's a, I think he works for the Genius Bar. So like he's actively fixing things or, so he can't really be as home as much as she can. But I think just overall, like people are having this opportunity to explore their careers in a new light and I just think it's so great and even professors we're in class together like our professor can be like I'm not feeling well but we're still having class today um over zoom and I just think it's although the idea of zoom initially was not great at all I definitely think that it's brought a lot of benefits to the workplace and to education yeah, like I said, definitely brought a lot of, uh, my mom's an admit a school administrator, so she had to make the decision. She had, to, obviously you have to listen to what the governor said, but she's the one who makes all those big decisions. Like, should we be all in person? What's the hybrid schedule look like? And like I said, while my one sister cannot wait to go back to the classroom and like hang out with her friends, my other sister's like, no, like I want the rest of my senior year to be online. My grades are so much better. I get to spend more time with my dog, like in my room and like spending time with myself. And also she has more time because the, the school days are shorter now with COVID, which right. my sisters are getting more sleep. My sister gets to work more time at her part-time job and save up money for college. So like, I think that there's proven benefits for, you know, being on Zoom and spending more time to yourself. 110%. And I know, like, when we were in high school, we were, I don't know about you, but I was in school eight hours a day, 752. Oh and yeah. I just can't imagine doing that on Zoom anymore. Even like a three hour class is a lot for me just to sit there. I can't imagine going from class to class to class and staring at the screen. And I think a lot of people, I don't know if this is a proven fact, but I'm sure like their eyesight has deteriorated because I of so many people will block blue eye, like the blue light glasses. Yeah. I have them too. Um, it's, it's crazy, but I definitely think that students are getting more sleep. They're being able to have more time to themselves and with grades. Like I got my first 4.0 last semester and I don't think I would have done that if I was on ground doing three extracurriculars, working a part-time job. Um, I think just like the easiness of it and being able to focus on my academics was just a blessing and a half. Also, people are discovering so many new hobbies that make them happy. So like I joined the newspaper this year because I had more time to write and sit down and be in my computer. And I was like, wait, like I love covering news. I love being a beat reporter. And then my one sister, she's hated reading her whole life. She loves books now. She read the Harry Potter series in under a month. She's now moving on to the Bridgerton series. Like it's awesome. My one cousin who changed her major 10 times, dropped out of college. She's like, I don't know what I love. She started an Etsy shop now because she loves making clay earrings and now she's making this whole profit. So like not only have people found time to like find the simple pleasures in life, they found like full-blown hobbies and like things about themselves that they never would have explored really had the pandemic not hit and made their not only mental health better, but like my sister definitely feels more stimulated and more intelligent, even just like reading a book a day. She's like excited. I will FaceTime and she's like, oh my gosh, I have to go. I have to read the next chapter of my book. Bye. Like, I'm so excited to read it. So it's just like really sweet to see that growth in people. And like I said, my cousin has more financial security now because of the whole Etsy shop. A lot of people I know have opened up Etsy shops, Depop shops, um, everything like that, Smart, starting their small side hustle and everything too. Definitely. Um, I know for me, I started this podcast, like I've always wanted to be a podcaster, but I had no idea where to begin. I was like, I don't want to talk about movies because I feel like everybody and their mother thinks they're a film critic. Um, <laughs> yep. And I just like didn't know what I wanted to do. And podcasting honestly changed my life. It gives me a brand to uphold. It gives me, because being a film major and like I went into college thinking I wanted to make movies. That's not the case anymore. I would love to be like a brand manager or social media manager or work in development. I'm really interested in the creative side. And I think having this podcast has been able to help me learn, but also uphold my own brand, my own personal brand and be able to tell my story. Before COVID, I like shared my story but now I'm sad to because so many people are coming out about their stories with mental illness and other things and although I don't suffer from mental illness I have like very low-lying 
um, anxiety. My siblings both have ADHD. My brother's on the autism spectrum. So mental health does run in my family um, to some degree. I think being able to have this podcast and being able to have this platform to talk to people and talk to viewers um, has just, again, been a blessing. And I don't think I would have been able to find the time to do this if it wasn't for the pandemic. Yeah, and obviously there are still people who, you know, the pandemic's caused a lot as well. Like there's always the bad parts. Like, oh, definitely. That you, um, because I feel like we've been talking so positively about it, but like oh God, we can't yeah. like ignore that. You know, when I when I told my mom about the um, altercation between students at Quinnipiac, like the kind of stabbing, she was like, honestly, I'm not surprised because she, like I said, she's a school administrator. She's like, people have been just so locked up, like people being angrier and being more prone to, you know, not violence, but just like fighting people, you know, so many celebrity couples have divorced. And I'm sure right. that a lot of couples now that they've been forced to like them be locked up together in a home for like the entirety of their day, they've realized, Hey, this isn't the person that like I want to be with. So there's also people coming to terms with that. And that also affects your mental health in a negative way too. 110%. And I think when you're talking about fighting people, I notice there's so many anti-maskers, so many anti-vaxxers. Yeah. And I'm very pro-vaccine. I'm going to openly say this in my podcast. I don't think that people should be forced to get the vaccine, but I think as a human being, having courtesy for one another, it just pisses me off to no end when people don't wear their masks or people are on campus wearing their masks under their nose or wearing it as a chin strap, like wear it right or stay home. Um, and I think a lot of people have argued about that. And I think it's not really a political issue. It's a humanity issue. Like just wear the mask and care about yourself and care about your neighbors. Yeah. I don't understand this whole mentality that I've seen either online or people like have the balls to say, <laughs> they're like, well, if you're just scared, just stay home. And I'm like, do you know how many people with autoimmune disorders, people with diabetes, people like you with chronic illnesses that you're just telling to stay home. People who are already at a, not a disadvantage in life, but like you are, you're on disability. You're more targeted in society um, for your disability and already struggling enough. Like you're telling them to stay home and struggle with their illness even more. And I love the, the idea that you said like, hey, if you don't wanna wear a mask, just stay home. That's the, I would rather definitely say that <laughs> then tell all these right. safe folks to just struggle and stay scared and lock themselves in their home out of fear. Exactly. I don't think that I, like, I just don't, I find it very difficult that there are so many people not to like, di like redirect the conversation, but are so um, pro one thing, but then so anti another thing. Like if you care about human life, care about all forms of human life mm -hmm. and, um, just like wear your mask. I, I think a lot of people have shown their true colors that they are in this mentality that they're immune to COVID. Like COVID could get anybody. Like I was talking to a friend of mine the other day. They were like, I work in the front lines and I got COVID like one month into it. My grandma got COVID. She was exposed two other times, but luckily got vaccinated. She was like the first person in her nursing home to get vaccinated. And I think that it's, I don't want to say it's torn a lot of families apart, but it's really a lot of people haven't seen their loved ones in over a year now. I haven't seen my grandma since last February. And I think it's really taken a toll on a lot of people. Yeah, my grandparents live literally like five minutes away from me. And there was a time, like we saw each other at least once a week, if okay. not more before the pandemic. And then after the pandemic hit, it was like maybe once a month. And that was very difficult, especially for my mom because those are her parents. Like those are the right. people and you know I got COVID me and my sister got COVID actually our entire family got COVID um not us being irresponsible someone got it from work because my sister works at a farm someone one of our co-workers was partying and gave it to her so that was yeah. great our entire family got it but we we're fine what was also terrifying was um it was actually kind of humbling at that time where we were sitting around at the fireplace. We were actually reflecting on how lucky we were in the pandemic. And then my dad comes out to the fireplace and he's like, granny has COVID in the nursing home. And you know, the nursing homes in New Jersey, there have just been a lot of secrecy around it. So 
we were very lucky because my granny was asymptomatic. She didn't struggle with it at all. And my other grandparents got vaccinated before they were exposed to the, to coronavirus. So I'm just so lucky that I don't know anyone directly who's passed away from it, but like, there have been some scares. Like when my granny got it, I was like, well, she's going to, I like right in, right in my brain. I'm like, oh my God, I'm not, I'm never going to see her again. Right. And it's just so hard too. Like my granny has um, in the nursing home, she has like a le- uh, lesser memory. She suffered from a stroke. So she doesn't have a good memory. And like right. every day she wakes up and she's like, can I just go outside? Can I go to church? And I know it's so hard for my dad. Like we can only wave from a window. We haven't seen her in person in over a year. So that's right. obviously something that's very hard for my parents. Um, to especially because I know that this is probably my granny's like last years of life you know like she's getting older her memory's deteriorating you don't want to spend those last years watching them be locked up in a nursing home and you only having to wait from a window like you want to be in person with them and experience those last years with them no definitely and I know for me like I'm in the same boat my grandma got COVID right around this time last year and we were like we didn't think we we found out on Easter that she got it I Um, remember yeah crazy because my birthday was two days after Easter and she got it like that Saturday that Friday or Saturday and my grandfather and I her husband and I went to Florida for spring break because we didn't think anything was going to happen like the pandemic kind of just didn't like it existed but we didn't think it was going to enter the United States I got to Florida and the first case hit the United States and it was this whole big panic like we've got to go home and then we get home we rushed got home and then we just stayed in our house for three months and I've been so lucky I've haven't knock wood haven't I've been exposed a few times but I've never gotten COVID I've been very smart I've double masked and hopefully I just don't want to get it by any means don't want to be exposed and I think a lot. I think the sacrifice of not necessarily going out with your friends all the time or doing that is keeping me safe. So sometimes I make the sacrifice and it sucks in the moment, but in the end, like it's one less chance of me getting exposed. Yes, I agree. So that's all the time we have today. It has been a pleasure talking to you, Sydney. I think that we've had an open conversation about the ups and downs of COVID, the highlights of working from home, the downfalls of the culture and the climate of the United States currently. And I've had a great conversation um, and I am looking forward to having more conversations in the future with you. Thank you for coming. Everybody remember, wear your mask, social (laughs) distance and be safe. Thank you, Jonathan. You're welcome.